Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk about that miasma of incandescent plasma 93 million miles away, the sun. So, as photographers, we often want to incorporate the sun in our imagery. Difficulties arise, however, when we realize that the sun is very bright. It is, it is a hot star, after all. And those difficulties manifest in our images when the light of the sun is scattered across the front element of our lens, creating flaring as well as a general lack of contrast. These issues are difficult to correct after the fact in post-processing. So what do we do? Well, a few years ago I learned a technique. Uh, I'm not really sure about the genesis of this, but if you do know, let me know in the comments. But basically, you figure out your composition that has the sun incorporated into it. You take a picture with the sun in the picture, and then a moment later, you cover the disk of the sun with a hat, your hand, a couple of fingers in front of the camera, um, anything you can to block out the disk of the sun in your image. And after the fact, you can take these images in Photoshop or any image editing program of your choice and composite them to get the best of both, both worlds. You get to keep the sun in the image, but you also don't get all of that nasty flaring and lack of contrast that happens when you shoot into the sun. So I'm gonna walk you through my process about how I did this um, in an image I took at Death Valley National Park a few years back. So let's take a look. All right, here we are in Lightroom Classic. Let's take a look at the two images we're going to composite into our finished photo. So here's the first one shot directly into the sun. Now, as you can see, there's a couple of problems that arise from shooting into the sun. One is you get these uh, nasty flares all throughout the image, these sort of green speckles, and those are difficult to remove without removing uh, detail in the image. Secondly, it's also robbed the image of contrast. By shooting into the sun, it sort of washed out the image. So just a moment later, I took this second image. It's the similar composition, but in this one, I've covered up the sun with my fingers. Now, as you can see in this image, there is little to no flaring uh, throughout the image. and also has a lot better contrast. There's a lot greater detail in the shadow regions here in the foreground. So what we're going to do is combine these two. Now, I'm going to start working on this, this image here. I go to the Develop module. And the first thing I do with every image is set the lens corrections. All right. So in the Lens Corrections panel, I'm going to remove Chromatic Aberration, and I'm going to enable the Profile Corrections. That uses uh, what it knows about my lens to correct for distortion and vignetting. Now, the other thing you might notice between these two images is this one's a little bit brighter. Now, because I was using Aperture Priority, the camera's light meter uh, compensated for less light by bumping up the exposure. Now, in a perfect world, I would have shot on manual to have control over all these settings, but uh, we can adjust this after the fact. So this second image is a little bit brighter. So I'm going to dial down the exposure just a little bit by about a third of a stop. And that brings them a lot closer together in exposure. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is adjust the horizon. So I'm going to use the crop tool here. And as you can see, the horizon is just a little off in reference to the uh, the grid we have here. So I'm just gonna rotate that just a little bit to bring that in line. Perfect, close that. All right, so those are pretty much all the corrections I'm gonna do at this point. Um, now I'm gonna take these adjustments and sync them over to the other image. So down here in this little film strip, I'm going to control click on the other image. I've got both of them selected. In the bottom right hand corner, I'm going to click on sync and I'm going to make sure all of the adjustments are brought over with the exception of exposure because I did darken the second image. All right, so I'm going to synchronize those two. So now all the adjustments I made to this image here are also made to this one. All right, so now I'm going to select these two images once more by control clicking on the second image. So they're both selected. I'm going to right click 
and I'm going to edit in and then open as layers in Photoshop. All right, here we are in Photoshop CC. This is the 2021 version, but any version in the last few years will be perfectly fine. Okay, so Photoshop has opened the two images as layers. We have the image with the sun star on top. And on the bottom, we have the image that we're going to use as the foreground. That's important that the, the sun image is on top. All right. Now, these photos were not taken on a tripod, so there's a little bit of a shift from one to the other. So to fix that, we're going to align these layers. So I'm going to make sure both layers are selected by selecting one of the layers, then shift clicking on the other. I'm going to go to Edit, Auto Align Layers. Make sure the projection is auto. Hit OK. And it's going to match those up. Now, as you can see, it's created a little bit of junk around the edges. We're going to crop that out. Excellent. So now we're going to start blending these layers. With the top layer selected, I'm going to create a new layer mask by clicking this little add layer mask at the bottom of the layers panel. And by default, it's going to fill that layer mask with white. That means it's going to reveal the entire layer. I want to change that. So I'm going to click on the paint bucket tool. I'm going to swap the foreground and background colors so that black is in the foreground and I'm going to fill that layer mask with black. Make sure that layer mask is selected when you do that. Now that hides the entire layer mask. So I'm going to start to paint the parts of that layer that I want back into the image. So I'm going to select the brush tool, swap the foreground and background colors so that white is in the foreground. Make sure I have a pretty big soft brush here. Okay. And then I'm just going to start painting back in the sun and painting out my fingers. Excellent. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten this image by going to Layer, Flatten Image, and that combines the two layers together. Now, while I'm still in Photoshop, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a couple of corrections um, while I can. First of all, I'm going to go to the Spot Healing Brush Tool, and I'm going to make sure Content Aware is selected as the type. And I can have a pretty decent sized one there. Now I'm going to remove this flare that still made its way into the image. Do a little bit of dust removal down here. And then finally, we're going to get rid of this, this gentleman who decided to embark on my picture. There we go. All gone. It's like he was never there. Excellent. Now I'm going to save this and take this back into Lightroom. All right, here we are back in Lightroom. We're going to make one more trip to make a few final adjustments to this image before finishing it up. This is the composite image. The first thing I want to do is warm it up a little bit using this white balance temperature slider to bring it more in line with what I saw that day. Then I'm going to bring down the highlights slider to bring out more detail in uh, the brighter parts of the image in the sky. And you can start to see the sun star emerge. We fought so hard to hold on to that. We don't want it to go away now. Next, I'm going to take a graduated filter and focus on the sky. Draw that up a little bit. We're going to remove this default exposure adjustment and I'm going to bring down the highlights even more, just a little more. Great. Next, I'm going to increase the white slider. This increases some of the brighter tones in the image. And just do that to my taste. Great. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of a negative clarity adjustment. And what that does is soften up some of the harsh edges, edges in the foreground here. Just a little bit. Give it sort of a, an ethereal look. Last, I'm going to add a little bit of a saturation adjustment. Just increase the color saturation just a little bit to recover some of that lost color that was lost in the um, raw conversion. And I lied, that wasn't the last thing. And the last thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of a vignette, draw the viewer's eye toward the center of the image. All right. And then maybe one more thing. I lied. A little more exposure. 
Perfect. All right, let's take a look at the image by itself before the adjustments and after the final adjustments. All right, I hope that's been helpful in some way to you and that you picked up some cool tools and techniques that you can use uh, the next time you want to take a picture of the sun. Uh, just don't look directly at it with your eyes or through the viewfinder, very important. Um, anyway, uh, if you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe so you can see the newest videos that I post, hopefully every week. Uh, if you want to see what I'm up to, please follow me on Instagram at Matthew Arrington Photo or check out my website at MatthewArrington.com. Thank you so much for joining me again, and I'll see you next week.